Hi, my name is Jason, and I'd like to tell you all about a really great web production tool called Jekyll. Before we jump into all the powerful things that Jekyll allows you to do while you're building websites, let me tell you what it is and why you should even care about using it in the first place. To do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about what it was like to build websites 10 years ago. So here's an example of an old-fashioned web page from way back in 2003. So if you imagine I had a really thriving anti-cat web page where I talked about all the reasons why cats are the worst, you can see that this is all written in HTML. And because it's only about four pages, that's actually not a bad idea. Like I already said, it would be fast and it would be pretty easy to maintain as long as you know HTML. The problem would start if I decided to turn this into, say, a blog back then. And let's say I didn't want to use my live journal or my Zanga accounts. I might just want to have a secret blog here on my own website where I talk about a different reason why cats are terrible every day. Each time I created a new post, I'd have to copy over most of the content in this page. So basically everything here, all of the HTML headers, the actual header of the site, and the footer of the site would all have to be copied into every post. Now copying and pasting isn't hard, so that's not a big problem. But what happens is when I have 300 or 500 posts about why cats are terrible, and then I want to change my Hotmail address here, or I need to change my Motorola Razor phone number, it's going to become a big problem because I'm going to have to open up 500 files and change it. Now you could use something like Find and Replace, but you can see that it's starting to get messy and complicated and just open up all kinds of reasons why you might have problems. So around this time, or maybe a little bit even before, people started moving away from just HTML files and started to use dynamic web languages like PHP to pull in chunks of content onto sites so that you could reuse them over and over and maintain them in just one place. So you could pull the footer in, you could pull the header in, and just have what's unique to that page, say the main content, just be that part of that page. The other thing that happened was that people started wanting to put their content in databases. This allowed you to do interesting searches. It also allowed you to use something like a WYSIWYG editor so that you wouldn't have to actually even know HTML. You could still write content. A lot of this was all driven by the idea of blogging. Because once you start blogging, you're not just using a static website. You're actually creating new content every day or every other day. And that means you have to do things a little differently. Now since then, things have gotten better. Code is faster. There's lots of good caching. And so using a database and using dynamic languages is not a big problem. But what if we could go back to having static HTML files that loaded really fast and that were really easy to cache, but we could still maintain our website in a modular way? That's exactly what Jekyll allows you to do. It gives you a templating engine and a processing engine so that you can write in Markdown or Textile, and it keeps everything separate for you while you're maintaining your site and when you're ready to build it, ties it all together and spits out a bunch of static HTML files. And then you can take those files and you can literally put them anywhere you want. So if you have access to a server that doesn't have even PHP or any kind of dynamic web language on it, you can still generate your site and put it up on this static server and it will still work, but you didn't have to maintain it as static HTML files. The other advantage is to Jekyll, which is why it's popular in the programming community, you can write your posts in your favorite editor just using Markdown or Textile, and you can keep track of all of your content in version control, which is a lot harder to do when you're storing that content in a database. So over this next series of videos, I'll teach you how to install Jekyll, how to get it configured, how to use third-party plugins and even write your own plugins, and how to deploy your site to GitHub pages or anywhere you want. So if any of that interests or excites you, or if you just share my hatred of felines, I hope you'll join me in the next video where we'll get Jekyll installed.